And we're live. Another episode of The Oddest Couple. I'm Felix Levine. Across from me is, is John A. Light. In a sec, I'm going to introduce uh, a very... Uh, everybody knows him. Everybody, he was a he, uh, a special character on our show a couple years ago. Um, Gene Borello. But just really quick, as always, quick shout out to Legacy 11 Vodka. 11 times it's still 11 times filtered, sugar-free, and gluten-free. Um, if this is your first time watching our show, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. We love the comments. The good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, it's all engagement. It's all honestly, it's good fun at the end of the day. Um, so please continue to do so. Uh, Gene, how we doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you guys? Hey, I miss you, Gene. I'll see you soon. Hopefully after uh, the holidays. Yeah, it's been a long time, man. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. What? I haven't. Seen, when's the last time we sat together and did a, did a show? Two years ago. No. You keep going on vacation. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And nowhere good either. <laughs> I went on the good vacations. I went to Europe. I keep going on I keep they keep putting me in jail. It's crazy. <laughs> um so okay, you guys wanted to talk about Ronnie One Arm today because you guys both know a lot. I know much less. I'll do it on the next show, Ronnie One Arm. Let's do the Derek Chauvin. Oh, you wanted to Derek Chauvin today. Okay. Well, I'll let you lead. All right. So you you know the situation with Derek Chauvin. He was accused and convicted of killing George Floyd, but I'll get into that in, in a minute. But you give me a little history of what you heard. So my good friend, obviously, you know, is Frankie Pasqua. Um, Frankie Pasqua is in the same jail as him and was actually hanging out with him. I got a text message because there's text apps in, uh, in jail. You could text. And um, I got a text from Frankie because I haven't heard from him in a while. So um, they're in Arizona, right? Down. Arizona. Dropout yard in Arizona. This is a dropout yard. By the way, dropout yards are just as bad now. Um, we'll get oh, I know. It's what gas pipe Wait, was Wait, what's at. a, just just for people who, who aren't familiar, what's a, what's a dropout yard? A, dro a dropout yard basically is guys that want to lead their gang, cooperators, chomos, um, all mixture of just people that can't walk population. But what's happening is that a lot of these guys are going to dropout yards and they're still active gang members. They're still wilding out. They're, they're, it's it's still bad, bro. They're, it's it's basically like not safe. So they're making it like it is safe, but it's really not. People are still getting stabbed in there and killed in there too. So you, I know you get a lot of Aryan brothers that, you know, so for Felix and people that don't know, they got life. They're never getting out of life sentences. They killed a lot of guys inside, outside, and they go into these dropout units where they can kick back a little bit more and relax and instead of staying in these facilities where they're still killing but it ends up like he just said there's so many guys that are killers and different things that these dro dropout units are just as bad they're still hitting guys and they're stabbing got guys it. up and things got it yeah yeah and on top of that you gotta understand it's very hard to get in the WITSEC unit see the guys that are not everybody that cooperates goes into the units that you want to there's only six dropout um six um WITSEC units and they're hard to get into so you go into a dropout yard and it's still dangerous so anyway um frankie I haven't heard from Frankie. Frankie was calling me from prison and everything, and I haven't heard from him. And I go, what's, I go, tech, and I'm trying to call his girlfriend. I says, what's the matter? He goes, oh, the girlfriend said somebody got stabbed in jail. They shut it down. So I didn't know yet what it was. Frankie texts me. He goes, yo, they stabbed the cop, the guy. He goes, um, he goes, I was with him because Frankie was hanging out with him for a little while. And he goes, I was with him. He goes, bro, it was a massacre. He goes, the guy, the guy got massacred. That's what he told me. He says, the guy was left for dead. Like, they yeah, he stabbed him 22 times. But, uh, you know, just to fill you all guys in on something in, in the audience is he got stabbed up 22 times prior to him being in a dropout unit. He was in solitary confinement. The lawyers sent letters in to get him out in population, which, you know, it's not easy, especially for regular guys that have never been into a, into a solitary confinement to do uh, solitary for confinement time. You had to be a certain person to be able to do years in there. And, you know, these guys obviously isn't used to it. But the problem I have is this for the people that don't have knowledge of this. And again, I never believe in what the government's message is out into the street. And I'm going to get into the George Floyd murder itself, uh, what he got charged. But first, I want to get into something. This guy was an Emmy. For the people that don't know, it's Mexican Mafia. He was also a cooperating witness, and he was going home in three days. So it, it, it does, first, it doesn't make sense why a guy that's going home in three days is going to hit a guy so he gets a life sentence and he doesn't come home. Second, they're trying to imply that he was hired by a black group, whether it was BLM or anybody else, and they paid him or they asked him to hit uh, Derek. So the people that don't know... 
Quick question. I, I'm reading something that says that the the guy who uh, John Tursak, the, the one who who uh, attacked him, he was sentenced to 30 years in 2001, was slated for release in 2026. Yeah, he might have been slated for 2026, but they said he was getting out in three days. Oh. It doesn't matter what's accurate. Even if he was getting out in 2026, just say for argument's sake, that is true. You're not going to hit somebody and give yourself life. Yeah. So he's in a dropout unit for a reason because he was done with crime. But for him to hit, but here's the, the part that, that the rest of the country don't know. It's kind of like the DOJ with the Epstein thing. When they made a comment that uh, about that, that we did the, if people have never seen it, watch the Epstein uh thing because we were in the same prison as Epstein. Watch the uh, show we did on that. But the the Mexican mafia does not w work with the black groups. And if anybody from the Emmys does uh, interacts with the black groups, they'll get killed by their own people. So it doesn't make sense. If this guy's in a dropout unit and he's still involved with the Emmys like, like they're claiming, which I doubt, he's not going to do work for anybody else and, and hit uh, Derek for them. It just doesn't, they just don't intertwine with each other. They're actually at each other on a regular basis in the series joints. So I have a problem with that version. I don't think it was a hit, to be honest with you. I just think it was something like a beef, maybe. I'm going to find out when Frankie calls me again. Right now, the lockdown, he can only, he can only come out when he cleans because he has a job. So when he comes out, he'll text me and tell me what's going on. He said, according to uh, what is reported, the 50-year-old suspect reportedly told police he didn't intend to kill Chauvin, but had spent a month thinking about assaulting the victim before shiving him in the prison's law library. Prosecutors allege prison guards stopped Tursak from committing murder. That part is probably true. Well, again, he, he, now let me get to the, to, the, to the murder itself with George Floyd. And I've talked about he never deserved to get killed or die or what other things, but the problem of uh, Derek Chauvin's case has recently come out. For, I don't know if you noticed, Gene. They have a technique in Minnesota they were taught. It's actually in their handbook to sit your knee on the collar of a person to control him. His knee was never on his neck. The original, and they know this, are holding the evidence back, is he had three times the amount of fentanyl in his body that would have killed, you know, uh, any any human being. So he... he the, what do you mean it wasn't on his neck? He wasn't on his neck. His knee was actually on his collarbone. It's a trained, it's a trained thing. They they train their officers. The chief of police of Minnesota actually went up and testified and said they're not taught this technique. The mother came in and showed and brought the book and the handbook where it's taught. Also, other officers came in, high-ranking officers, and testified there's a technique that they're taught. So he was it wasn't an I intentional mean, murder. Yeah, but He's screaming he can't breathe. He's no, there he's for screaming. eight minutes he, he, and 50 seconds. 100% he can't breathe because he's got three times the fentanyl. I don't, think it's just that. I don't think it's just that. 100%. It's, I'm going to tell you why. The This was, again, this government was trying to instigate and use something prior to the elections. to they uh, And the George Soros backed payment to, to uh, disrupt this country. There's no way... When someone, when you have a coroner's initial report that says it was not due to asphyxiation, it was due to the fentanyl. That was official report. They changed it. Then the, the, the chief of police, why would you lie on the stand? And why is the Supreme Court denying access to hear this case with, with the lies of hierarchy of the police department? Chief of police, if you taught this technique, why wouldn't you just say that? Hold on. What? I think it's hard to defend that there was no wrongdoing. You think 100% there's no wrongdoing, in my opinion. And I'm not, I'm like, I'm a, I was a gangster too, no different than George Floyd. But there, the, I've been, I've been, you know, I've talked about this. I've been beat up bad by the police. Broke, they broke my arms, they broke my jaw, broke my nose, split my head open. I'm not saying all these cops are innocent. In this situation, he was trained, and if you watch the videos, they're holding back. They were actually trained to do this. Here's the point, point by point. Yeah, but, uh, he's trained to put okay, his but knee there. But he's also, yeah, but. He, they try to make this I'm racial. Sorry, I, just disagree. I, I just disagree that you, there's that there's no wrongdoing. Like if someone's not, he's not a threat. He's literally not a threat. He's on the floor. and He's, he's a threat because he's six foot six and he's dangerous. John, he's not a threat. The, there's there's 10 cops around in there. And, but you got to understand the mentality of the police because I've been locked up and beat up by them. They're petrified and I'm not that size. They're, these guys are petrified of getting hurt or killed themselves 
a lot of them do get killed and hurt. So when they have us, and they did it to me, they didn't have to beat me the way they beat me, but they are beating you, and a lot of that's out of fear. It's not just because they want to hurt me. A lot of that's fear. They're not sure how dangerous if you get a hold of their gun, if you get a hold of anything, if you get somebody else right, shows up. He for was you also there. unconscious. Like if you if you are consciously and fighting back, I can understand someone's going to put their their they're going to use a tactic beyond your collarbone, like whatever they need to control you. He was not moving for minutes. But you're still missing the point. He's dangerous. He put a gun to a pregnant girl's stomach. They know that. They know. I, get, get, they know I did this. They not not to a pregnant woman, but they know I shot people. Listen, this is what it is. It was wrong the way he died, but they made him like he was this great guy, and he wasn't. But the thing is that it's sad that he died. You know what I'm saying? But he did like seven state bids. He had like attempt rape. He had horrible things. But I'm saying that's not the point. The point is, is that. You know, the way he died, I guess they're justifying, they're trying to say that he did it the wrong procedure, whatever it was. So if they ruled that, obviously they're lying because you're saying in their handbook, it's showing that they're taught to put this knee there. So why would they go against their own people? Explain that. Why? Why would they go against their own cops? I know why they did, because it was there was an agenda. It was a race agenda. When And I keep saying this, and there was four people at that. Out of those four, there was two different races also. I believe it was uh, uh, Spanish and another black guy and uh, maybe, uh, what was the other one, Hawaiian or something. So it wasn't just, uh, they try to make it sound like, a, because again, there's an agenda to divide this country by race, which this is the government with this, this agenda of separating everybody and enticing this. And when you see Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and arrested them with their, bowing with their knees down, and they didn't do that for 13 soldiers that, that died in Afghanistan. I know it's an agenda. You ain't conning me. I grew up on the street. I just said, no one's saying this guy deserved to die. No, this is different than I didn't deserve to get my head split open by the cops. But we understand that we're in the game. This is, when you're in that game, this is what comes with it. We get hurt by them too. And it's part of it. Not that he should have died, but I know when you're not truthful. Now, why did that chief of police get up there and lie? That's the, that's the question. Why isn't the Supreme Court listening to it again? Why wasn't the rest of the evidence presented to the rest of the country? And 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 why did they allow the the, the Minnesota to burn down along with the precinct? So there's an agenda behind the story itself, no different than Epstein and the rest of this. Well, well, I can tell you that Frankie said that um he actually thought he was a celebrity in there, and people really didn't like him. That's also what was said. Well, you know, I, I'm not saying the guy's likable or dislikable. I don't know the guy. Maybe he's, a, you know, he maybe he has a shitty personality. Nobody likes him. That could be, but that doesn't mean because you got a shitty personality, you 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 should be able, you should be convicted. It doesn't mean anything if you also that George Floyd is a nice guy or a bad guy. You ain't supposed to die. That's not my point. My point is where's the government really stand here? Because they're hiding evidence. They're lying about evidence. And now at the end of it, if they showed that evidence and then came out with a conviction, I'd say, okay, they were honest. But when you're dishonest, I have a problem with that. It's no different than J6, I keep talking about it. You're allowed your exculpatory evidence. When you hold it back, you, then there's, there's a mistrust in this government. Johnny, let me explain something to you. This world is so screwed up right now, everything in general. I was, I was watching the, um, Instagram. And there was some girl, a teacher, saying she wants to identify as a Hershey. <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? This whole world is fucked up, Johnny. You can't even, you can't even talk. Listen, the world is just screwed up right now, bro. You know. But I don't think it's the world. I, I, I think it's the government. The government's enticing all this. She wants to be a Hershey. Okay, so I want to be a refrigerator. But you know, the thing is, the government's, the the, the government's enticing this division. This is my whole point on on the last show. This show. It's it's the the division is intentional. The division is to to cause animosity between people. I just watched two preachers the other day, right on TV. Two black preachers, and what they were talking really really intelligent. And they said this is what they should be preaching. Just what they preach: family values, love, togetherness, children to be educated. All the the values that keep uh, all of us, including me, that gets divorced, separated, single family homes. This is all affects it. Why aren't they talking about this stuff? Why do they keep trying to talk about hate and division is what's making me talk against what this government's doing. And and that's the problem because if you're going to show what why did that first that that first report come back 
that he wasn't strangled, he didn't die by an autopsy. Why'd they change it? Just like Epstein. Why are they changing what is initially being said? These guys have no agenda to, to say what they're saying. So, so, why, so why are they changing it? Well, listen, with Epstein even, I was in the hole where he was, and um, the Suicide Watch, and I don't know if you know how NBC Brooklyn is on the Suicide Watch, you have a guy that sits in a chair that literally looks at you. That's a yeah. shift. Right, right. It's like anyone that's in these jails if, that you're watching this right now, NBC Brooklyn in the East, in the um, in the Suicide Watch, it's in 81. That's the, that's the house it's in. We used to be in 81. Uh, it was the cooperators unit, but they switched it. But the Suicide Watch is right underneath us. So what happens is the top tier is regular people and the bottom tier is suicide watch. You literally, so everyone can understand how crazy this is. How could he have killed himself when you literally have a cop that watches you and logs and looks what you do the whole time? It's a shift. They all, they, they switch shifts. A guy never leaves your side. When you go to the shower, he walks with you and stands by the shower and brings you back in. So and there's no time for you even to do it. Even in the middle of the night, there's a guy watching you. He sits there on a chair and just looks into yourself. And yeah, you have well, nothing in there. Here, here's my my whole point of this, and to to Felix's point, the agenda of trusting this government is over, because you have I, I'll give you some cases. One of the women that testified against Epstein and Maxwell, shortly after she just died, they just found her in a hotel. Are we really buying this? I mean, I'm not buying all this stuff. I just so. There was nothing in the news even about the Maxwell trial. They didn't even talk about it. Like, they're supposed to be on the front page every day. They wouldn't even bring it up. They wouldn't even bring it up. Why? My, I, I completely agree. I, I think the issue, the only issue that I have is that because, because there's corruption somewhere does not mean that then everything is a string theory of, uh, like, like, two things can, can be separate, right? The George Floyd can be a, a tragedy in its own right, and Ghislaine Maxwell and the corruption of the government can be another thing. It doesn't. It's not George Sor Soros controlling everything. Like George Soros can have impact on one thing, he could not have impact on something else. I think that's where the issue then becomes with when it comes to like misinformation and things is that people are like thinking that because the gov. I agree that the government is completely there's corruption and there's so many flaws, but it doesn't also mean that then. Derek Chauvin didn't do something wrong. You now, I'm not I mean? saying he didn't. I'm saying the government's hiding facts. And this is a problem. When you hide exculpatory evidence, it's a problem. It, it, listen, you need as a jury to be able to know that in that handbook, there was a technique, right? They didn't show that handbook. The mother had to come forward and bring that handbook on TV. There was other high-ranking police officers that later on that said the chief of police is lying. So here's my problem. When they don't give exculpatory evidence... That changes the whole thing that I don't trust the government. I don't trust them about what happened with Epstein we talked about. I don't trust them what happened to this witness that she just died in a hotel. I don't trust that Obama's chef and the Bushes and, and the Clinton chef both coincidentally just recently died, one in a water accident. It was the black guy that was a chef and was visiting the, the Obama's, and he, they say he had an accident. This is an expert swimmer. This is a guy who was in great shape. This is a guy who's in his early 40s. This is a guy that they're trying to sell that he died in a in a, a waterboarding accident in calm water and that he's doing he's doing uh videos how to how to exercise how to swim how to stay strong and this and that you're trying to tell me this guy died and then if you heard the the secret service phone call he sounded like an 18 year old kid calling and not making a big deal about it. i don't know how he is i don't really know if we need an ambulance i don't know who's buying this, especially after jfk was killed by our government and they won't release those papers. Too many people dying without explanations. That I completely agree. I think my, my ultimate point is that just because, you know what I'm saying? It's not like, not every, not everything, not, and not everything is a, is a conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. I know the, 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 the George Floyd, yeah, George Floyd's not a conspiracy. He, he died. It's, we, and but, we watched it happen. But there's different. But you got to understand something, Johnny. They have to, in the world today, um, like w with the police officers and, you know, I, I, they, some of their deaths, some of the things that they do are outlandish where it has to be, they have to have consequences. I'm not too big on the, um, this George Floyd situation. I don't really, I really didn't know too much about the case, but I know they had to make it bigger than what it was because at the time, a lot of this was going on and it was very political and people That's only make point. this big because they're trying to get, yeah, yeah. They're trying to get into office. They want to take the side of what's, you know, running the world right now. And, that could have played a part, but 
there had to be some wrongdoing because the juries wouldn't have convicted him, I think, on everything. You know what I mean? There had to be some kind of wrongdoing. It, it, well, first off, the trial shouldn't have been localized. That's number one. Second, that trial should have been it should have been held back for a while because it was too 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 political. Third, no different than if it was somebody else, not George Floyd, that had happened to, I'd be a lot more vocal about agreeing that he should have got 22 years. But I got to tell you the truth. There's no way somebody kills him or a cop kills me, and I'm going to use me, no different than him. They should get 22 years for killing us because they already know we're gangsters. They, well, I used to be a gangster. They already know what we used to be. So there's a different level when they when they come after but, us but, than, a, than a regular guy. But now, a regular point. guy is a different thing, but I don't agree with you. A lot of these cops, you got to go. They, they got thousands and thousands and thousands of everyday cases they're handling, and they're getting killed left and right. So if these are minute incidences compared to most of these cops don't, none of them go out and say, oh, I want to kill somebody tomorrow. They, they just don't. I'm being honest about the police. And I talk and people always, well, you're on the police side. No, I'm not. I'm on justice's side. I says, and a lot of these cops are good guys. And you got a couple that are bad, no different than gangsters. You got guys that are gangsters that will go kill a store owner. And you got guys that will kill a person that kills a store owner. You know, so it, and that's got to be brought front. But it's not a conspiracy theory. It's just it wasn't a fair trial. It wasn't. When you hide and lie and keep information, you didn't give the jury. If the jury knew this, would they convict? That's what I want to know. And, and they know his life's in danger the minute they convict him. They know the chances of him getting what he just got is 99% going to happen. You know, so and, and again, he's no different than us. If somebody pulls you over, you think those cops ain't afraid of you? No, I understand what you're saying. I agree with that. And, you know, right now New York is so bad. I mean, the Bronx is like the worst area in like the country right now. I mean, it's so disgusting and the violence is so high. But I understand these cops are nervous. But you understand sometimes I just the only thing I don't agree with is why they got to shoot for the chest and head. Why can't they just go for your arm or leg? That's the only thing I don't understand. I, come from I can understand that because I want to tell you why. Yeah. I trained in shooting from years ago from a cop because... When you shoot for the leg, which actually I've done to a guy, and I was with a guy, Tracy, that knows me the other day, and the guy was wearing the parachute pants. It went through his pant, not his leg. And now the guy's on top of you, right? So when you shoot for the middle of the body, right, that's your first shot, the middle of the body, you know you're stopping somebody. Because I'm going to give you an answer, Gene. This is the truth, and anybody can lie or not. The truth is, when you're on the street, you're a fucking criminal. And they're the good guys and we're the bad guys. Whether that's true or not, that's the way it goes. They want to go home to their family, just like we want to go to home to ours. So if someone pulls on us, we're not shooting them in their leg either. We're going to go for their head and their chest. And, the, and really, you're taught to go for the upper torso because it's the biggest spot in somebody's body to stop. What do you say about this? What do you say about this situation? I'll give you one that's pretty screwed up and they, they definitely deserve to go to jail. Sean, um, Sean Bell, they shot him 50-something times. They, you know, they reloaded. That's a little ridiculous, don't you think? I mean, for something like that. Yeah, a hundred percent, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I, and you know, it was a different time too. Would, would have. That was but bad. I, I, there's some of them that are justified, and some of them that are not. You know, it's like for me 106 precinct. We, we grew up in 106 precinct. They, they stun, they stun gun the kid. I don't know how many times they stun gun the other guy. They put a stick up his ass, and me, they beat the half to death there. I, I also got beat right in sneak a corner on the corner there. By, by the Cross Bay Movie Theater. They beat the hell out of me, 15 of them. They, 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 that's the place where they broke my nose, broke my arms, split my head open. They did everything to me. They didn't stop beating me. I had no weapon. But here on, on here's what I'm saying. You don't here, here's what I'm saying. Without, without the complaining on my end, we're gangsters. We signed up for it. It's too fucking bad. If you're not a gangster, this most of this ain't never going to happen to you. So what I'm saying is, well, yeah, I ain't a gangster anymore. So it doesn't happen to me anymore. But a lot of this is, this is what we signed up for. We know what we're signing up for. I see the point. Um, I definitely, yeah, I agree. I 100% I agree. Um, but back to um, this cop, this cop that got stabbed 22 times. I wanted to get back to him because um, from what Frankie told me, he was hanging out with the white guys in jail, I think the Aryan, you know, the dropout Aryan brothers, and Frankie was hanging out with him. But Frankie said that he wasn't really liked, and that he thought he was a celebrity, and he was acting like a little bit of a dick. So maybe that's why he got stabbed, not because of a hit or whatever they're saying. This stuff, it could have just been over a beef. You know how jail goes. Something happens, you disrespect someone, and they just hit you for their own shit. You know what I mean? 
Did 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 Frankie say that he spoke to him? Well, no, he got taken out on a friggin', you know, right oh. there. You can't. But the guy's probably saying, the guy's in the hospital. No, but I'm saying I'm saying before, obviously. Frankie's talked to him all the time. Oh, what? But how? How did he? And he said he was kind of a dick. Yeah, he said that you know Frankie really didn't like him. To be honest with you, did he? But you got to understand something. My point is exactly what you're saying. I don't buy the media's version. Because the Emmys don't work with the blacks, and they they're putting it on, they're making it a racial thing again. The blacks hired them, and the, the blacks ain't hiring nobody to do that. There's no black gangs that I know of that are gonna work with the with the Emmys. That that racial thing to me and you don't affect because when I was in prison, I I had more black friends than white friends. <laughs> you you know what? Like, we talk about this. Every everybody knows when I was in McKean, they'll tell you I've said it a hundred times. I I used to eat on the other side. No nobody that. I, I used to I used to eat with Butcher, yeah. But we, we grew up different. We grew up in the street where our friends were all mixed. So, you know, a lot of these guys don't think like us. Yeah. I fought with the Spanish dudes. I hung out with the blacks. I didn't get along with the Latin kings. I got along with everybody else. Yeah. Mommy's different. I, I, I just say, you know, when, when I'm talking about things that conspiracy theories, I don't call them conspiracy theories. Epstein, to me, isn't a conspiracy theory. The woman that just got killed that testified because they don't want that list to come out. It's not a conspiracy theory. Dick Durbin, a senator, right, uh, just denied. Dick Durbin just denied the, uh, the uh, Mar what's her name, Blackburn, Marsha, Marshall, whatever her name is. She just asked for the, uh, the plane logs of Epstein to be released. Dick Durbin blocked him. Why are you blocking him? What, what, why are you blocking well, the logs to come out? They, yeah. they, so, they, they killed well, that 100%. him. No, no different than, than Obama's chef. Him. They killed him. And I don't care. I'm not a cop. I'm not going to. But we've been on the street long enough. We know they killed him. They, we know that they killed Epstein. We know this woman just got killed. And we also know John F. Kennedy was killed by our government. I said they could sell that somewhere else. Wait. Hold on, something better. What about Epstein's bunkie that was supposed to test, that was supposed to do a show, and he had a heart attack in a cab? Did you hear about that one? Yeah, that's right. Him too. Yep. He 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 bunked with Epstein before he went to the whole suicide watch, yeah. and he was gonna give an interview, and all of a sudden he had a heart attack in the back of a cab. Wow, just a just yeah. a, just a coincidence. Everybody, you know, it's just amazing. I, I love this. Amazing. Everybody around them are dying. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, man. You know? it's, those aren't conspiracy theories. These are these are these are uh, things that we can't prove, but we know they were killed. We know that all these people were killed. Absolutely. You know, they're, I agree. they're no different than what we used to do for a living, and they could pull that on a regular public. I don't know who's buying it, but you know, you know, you're talking about two different. We're talking about two different subjects. The George Floyd. Well, all I'm saying is they're always bringing a racial thing in. It wasn't hired by no blacks. So that's nonsense. That's a bullshit rumor or wherever they got it from. Yeah, that's definitely bullshit. Yeah, 100%. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> Felix said, all right. <laughs> he had enough of the two of us. <laughs> Look, we're all fired up like the old days. So oh we're back on. It's we're so motivated funny. today. It's so funny. I wish we could um, sit together. It'd be better if we were next to each other. We will. Um, well, Gene, always, uh, always appreciate you and, uh, take care. Don't go back on vacation. Yes. No, no more vacation. Uh, well, <laughs> I give you one of those Peter Navarro's. He goes like that all the time. Well, <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, you soon. you're coming to Florida. Yeah, yeah. You're coming to Florida soon, right? Yes. Yeah. I'll be there soon. All right, brother. Thanks, guys. It was good seeing you.